In this video, we're going to take one last look at applying the row echelon form um, in an overdetermined system. Here you see we have one, two, three, four equations and only three unknowns, x1, x2, x3. So we're looking for a situation to see if each one of these x1s, x2s, and x3s can satisfy uh, all four equations at the same time. So if we find a value for x1, it works not only for this equation, but for the remaining equations. And same thing for x2 and x3. As we noted in the previous video, when you have an overdetermined system like this, the deck is sort of stacked against you um, as to whether you can find variables that will satisfy all four equations. Or to, be, to state it more correctly, if we have a situation where there are more equations, here there are four, than there are variables, here we only have three variables, the deck is really stacked against you as to whether these three variables can satisfy all four equations. But it's not impossible. For example, these could all be the equations of a plane, and perhaps all four planes intersect together uh, into a common line. And the only way really to determine that, or one of the most efficient ways to determine uh, whether this can be solved, is to go ahead, set up the augmented matrix, and then use the Gaussian elimination or the row echelon form, uh, different names for the same same technique. So here, here we have the augmented matrix. We have the columns 1, 2, 4, and 2. Then from the x2, we have 2, minus 1, 3, minus 1, 1, 1, 3, 3. And here, 1, 2, 4, 5. So here's our augmented matrix. And again, a reminder that when you're setting up your augmented matrix, you want to do whatever you have to do to ensure that the first, the number in the first row and the first column is a 1. So these all have coefficients. If this had a coefficient, say, of uh, 7, then we'd have to divide a cross by 7 in order to make it a 1. But it doesn't, so we can go ahead and proceed along. So what we want to do is, as we did in the previous videos, eliminate all the numbers below the 1. So let's do that and see what happens. Here then, to get rid of the 2, if we added this to a negative 2, then that would be 0. And the way we get that to happen is we imagine taking the first row and in our minds, in our imagination, multiplying it by negative 2 and then adding it to this row. I said in our minds multiplying it by negative 2 because these numbers here in the first row across, they stay the same. So go ahead. Multiply by negative 2 and add. So this is negative 2 plus 2. That becomes 0. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4 plus 1. That's negative 5. This is negative 2 times 1 is negative 2 plus 1. That's negative 1. Negative 2 plus 2. That comes out 0. So we made this a 0. And we got these other numbers going across. Now, we want to make this 0. So again, we imagine multiplying this row by negative 4 and adding it to this row. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. That comes out 0. Negative 4 times 2 is negative 8 plus 3. That's negative 5. This will be negative 4 plus 3. That's negative 1. This is negative 4 plus 4. That comes out 0. So these two rows right now are exactly the same after we go ahead and, after we went ahead and did our basic manipulations here. Now we want this one to be 0. So again, we imagine multiplying the first row 
by negative 2 and adding it to this row. So this comes out 0. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. That's negative 1. That's negative 5. Then we have negative 2 times 1 is 2. A negative 2. Add to 3. We get 1. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2 plus 5 gives us 3. So it takes us down to this augmented matrix. Now what we will do is multiply across by negative one-fifth all of these rows and then here we have zero, one, one-fifth, zero same thing here and here this will give us zero multiply by minus one-fifth that's one that's minus one-fifth this is minus three-fifths and then we can just multiply this row by negative one and add it to this row and here we get a series of zeros all the way across we'll discuss that in just a second now what we can do is this is this is one-fifth we can interchange these two rows here. That's a valid maneuver. So the series of zeros we have in the last row, and then above it we have this row. Zero, zero, negative two-fifths, negative three-fifths, and this one stays unchanged. Zero, one, one-fifth, zero try to keep things in better focus as we move along. Now here, we can. this is minus two-fifths, minus three-fifths. We can multiply across here by minus five over two. That gives us one, and minus three-fifths times minus five over two gives plus three-halves for here. So, Look what happened. We had it where we have a series of zeros, but this is also zero. So this means zero times x1 plus zero times x2 plus zero times x3 equals zero. Well, that's certainly valid. Here we have then the rest of it forms sort of this upper triangular form. Here we have one times x3 equals three halves. So we know then that x3 equals 3 halves. So we can write this up here. Now, this tells us that x2 plus 1 fifth times x3 equals 0. So we can erase this now. We don't need this any longer. Let's make some room. Okay, x3 equals 3 halves. We know that. And here we have x2 plus one-fifth times x3. So we have x2 plus one-fifth. Are we keeping this in range now? No. Okay. There. x3 equals three halves. We know that. And now we have x2 plus one-fifth times x3. But that's this. equals zero. Okay, so what do we have? We have x2 plus 3 tenths equals zero. x2 equals negative 3 tenths.
Okay, and now we can go to the top row. And we have 1 times x1 plus 2 times x2. That's minus 6 tenths. 2 times minus 3 tenths. So this is minus 6 tenths. Plus x3. That is 3 halves. Or 3 halves is 15 tenths. And let's see. That has to equal 1. Or let's say minus 1 equals 0. And that would be minus 10 over 10 equals 0. So here we have 15 minus 10. That's 5 minus 6. We have x1 minus one-tenth equals zero, so x1 equals one-tenth. So you see here we had an over-determined system, but indeed we did get a valid solution for x1, x2, and x3. Now notice what happened along the way is we encountered a series of zeros and we shifted these into the last row. That's fine. That's a valid operation. However, while we were going through this process, if we had zeros here, but a non-zero number over here, we'll just call it a constant C, then that would mean we have no solution because we'd have 0 plus 0 plus 0 equals some non-zero number. That can't happen. Therefore, we would have no solution. That's what you saw in the previous video. But as we're going through the process, if we end up with zeros here and we have a 0 here, then we're not necessarily dead in the water. And in fact, as you can see, we were able to pull out unique values for x1, x2, and x3. So if you have a set of overdetermined systems, that is, where you have more equations than what you have variables, the deck is stacked against you as far as finding a valid answer, but it might be. And really, the only way to find out is just kind of go through the um, row echelon or the Gaussian elimination process and kind of see what happens along the way. Now, it gets even more interesting if, let's say, we consider this system. We're here now. This is underdetermined because now we have only two equations and we have three variables. So now we have more variables then we have equations. That's an underdetermined system. Typically, what happens with these underdetermined systems is there either is no solution or there's an infinite number of solutions. And when we're dealing with underdetermined systems, we're going to encounter what is called lead variables. and free variables. And we're taking some time to try to lay this out, even with just some simple examples, because these here, this concept of lead variables and free variables, we're going to use continuously throughout the whole series here when we're discussing matrices. So come back, join us for the next video. We're going to take a look at some underdetermined system and find out how these lead variables and free variables start to creep into the system, and most important, um, what consequences they have. So come back, join us for those videos. We'll solve some more problems, and then we're kind of setting the stage so that we can take a more sophisticated look at matrices further on down the road. So that's it for now. Come back, join us for some more videos, and we'll try and plot through some more problems.